All right, we're going to start off this passage with three whole passage questions, which is a lot. And remember, we're supposed to save the whole passage questions for last, right? I advocate the no reading strategy where we wouldn't even read any of this passage. We would dive into the questions and we would have to answer the ones that have line references because we haven't read the passage. And we can do that for questions four through 10, but we would need to save this for last because we, we would need the other questions to have read the passage. But even if you read this passage first, I think it's better to save these for the end so that way you have twice as much information about what you've read. And when you look at this, there are problems with all these choices that might have, it might have eluded you if you just kind of get, went with your first instincts of what this is about. I think the other questions really help us here because they focuses, uh, focus us on different things. So let me show you what I mean. Choice A is a perfect example. A character's arrival at her family's ink shop sparks fond memories of her favorite aunt. So there's lots of good things about this choice, right? Do they get to the ink shop? Yes. Um, there's an ink shop. It's the, her, her family is obviously mentioned. Uh, well, it's definitely positive, so fond memory sounds right. But here's the thing. If we just read through this quickly once, we might think that we're talking again and again about the same aunt. But if we read the questions, we see that there are actually two different kind of characters and they're not the same person. There is an aunt who talks about what good writing is all about and everything like that. But then there's that old widow Lao and there's lots of other characters. And so here's a good example where when I narrow my focus a little bit, based on the other questions, which helped me do that, when I narrow that focus, I see that this is not quite right. It's not about her favorite aunt. That's one piece of it. But the whole passage is about much more than this one character. There's lots of characters. And so this is a bit of a problem. Let's keep going though. Like you might not eliminate this and be confident that it's wrong. So you might be like, okay, well let me see what else I've got before I make a decision. In choice B, a character's surprise visit leads to a happy reunion at her family's ink shop. So again, there's a visit, they're at the, the ink shop. Happy is probably an accurate, it's a positive passage. but Again, if I narrow my focus, that word surprise jumps out at me. I don't remember reading anything about it being a surprise. Maybe I missed it, but if that were a main idea, it would have been a repeated idea. It would have been something that is very likely to be in lots of different places, and I just didn't see it at all. So maybe I have bad luck, or maybe it's not a main purpose. So that one I'd be actually pretty, pretty confident in getting rid of. Choice C, a character comes to understand her father's ambitions while visiting her family's ink shop. Well, the father is not the focus. And his ambitions, I don't remember this being about like what he wants out of life or his success or anything like that. I mean, he's a character, they talk about him. But again, none of the other questions really seem to focus me on his ambitions. So this doesn't really match with what I read, and that's not a great sign either. Choice D, a character visits her family's ink shop, check, we've said that that happens, and it, deepen, and it deepens her appreciation of her family's work. Well, appreciation is right, family is right. Notice how this time, in this choice, it's about the whole family, not just about the father or the aunt, right? It's about everyone. And this was a story with lots of different characters. So that's a good sign. Now, if you were uncertain, remember with the no reading strategy, we start by not reading and we read only the line references that we're supposed to for the other questions. And that may mean that there's some things that get missed. But at the end, if we're still confused about a question, there's nothing preventing us from reading more. So this might be a case where you start to skim and, and see if this matches up. Luckily, the, the place that matches up is right at the end, right? Let me zoom in here. I was very proud to hear Father speak of our family's ink this way, right? So the narrator is proud. They're talking about the family's ink. Like, this is, this is like basically what they're saying in choice D, right? Deep appreciation. She appreciates her father's uh, speaking of it and the ink, and it, this, this is the match. And so what I think happens here is a lot of people who get this wrong answer this right away, either after they read the passage or, or whatever. They don't think about what they answered for the other questions. They haven't gotten to them yet or what, for whatever reason. 
And so you need to do that because the other questions are also in their own way about main ideas. So you'll see what comes up again and again. You'll see the different characters that they are emphasizing. And generally speaking, if the questions are emphasizing it, if the questions and the choices and the line references are repeating it, it's probably a main idea and it's informative for when you answer these big picture whole passage questions. I get this right because I saved it and because I trust my work for the other questions. Save this for last, give yourself the best shot, and you won't fall for the traps that they set all along the way here.